Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel. Today is another Bible study with us. Today's Bible study will be in James chapter 5 verses 1 through 6. So we're going to read that and then we'll jump into it. So James 5, 1 through 6 says, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded and their corrosion will be evidence against you that will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you keep back by fraud, are crying out against you, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in, the, in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous people. He does not resist you. I'm going to read the commentary that explains what James is talking about in these verses. James turns his attention from business people to wealthy landowners who controlled much of Galilee and indeed much of the Roman Empire. He denounces them for their materialistic accumulations of wealth, for defrauding their workers, and for their self-indulgent actions that have led to the deaths of innocent, righteous people. So we're going to talk about money here. I just want to start off with that money in general is not bad. And I know growing up, we grew up around a lot of religious people and have heard money is the root of all evil. There you go. And that's not entirely true. I think that that's an extreme. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. So they left that out. And so that can be misleading, especially when you hear it so many times growing up. And so money is not bad. It's the love of money. And whenever you put that before God and other things. So I'm going to reread verses one through three. Come now, you rich. Weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded and their corrosions will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last days. So here he's just pointing out that materialistic things won't last. They, what does it say? They rot. Um, your gold and silver have corroded. Your gar garments are moth-eaten. Nothing here on earth lasts. Every bit of it will turn to ruin at some point. He's saying that these things that we choose to spend our money on will be a testament to and show evidence in our final trial before God of where our heart was at while we were on this earth and what was important to us. Those who use riches for the wrong reasons will suffer judgment for their actions. Verse 4 says, Behold, the wages of the laborer who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. So this is talking about people who have told someone that they were going to pay them to do work. They let that person do that work, and then they withheld payment from them. It says that fraud is crying out against you, and that that cry has reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. Basically just that it's not going unnoticed. The way that we spend our money and the way that we treat others is not going unnoticed and we'll have to give account for that later on. That way of treating people goes against God's way of teaching. Like the golden rule for instance which is Matthew 7 12. So whatever you wish that others would do to you do also to them for this is the law and the prophets. And then I'm going to read 1 John 3, 16 through 17, which says, By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? But once again, just pointing out that the way we use what we have been given can either be good or bad. It clearly points out that we should use what we have to show God's love to others. So nothing that you have should come before God. And if he has entrusted you with riches, then you should use those riches to glorify him. I'm going to reread verses 5 and 6. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. The commentary for 5.5 five says, where it says, fatten your hearts in the day of slaughter. It says, like cattle in their fields, 
The rich gorge themselves on luxuries and fail to realize that they are headed for the final slaughter. That's really sad. That's kind of talking about how when someone is so focused on chasing money or getting rich or however you want to say it, that they tend to have no interest or a very small interest in spiritual matters. And even if those people a lot of times do good deeds or um, you see them giving to others or something like that, a lot of times they're doing it for the wrong reason. They're doing it to give glory back to themselves instead of pointing back to God. And the Bible tells us that you can't serve two masters. You can't serve both God and money. So if you are serving God and you've been entrusted with money, then that should all still be pointing back to God. I feel like this has been very repetitive, but it's a very good point because it's very, very easy to fall into the love of money. Very easy. Someone with this way of thinking fails to realize how real God is and they neglect to prepare for their eternity because of it. Being rich doesn't really do anything for somebody's eternity. It's all about matters of the heart. And an unjust use of riches will never really turn out well. So that's it for this Bible study. We hope you guys got something out of it and we hope that we didn't offend anybody because that was not our <laughs> intention we just want to learn what the bible says and try to apply it to our lives but if you're questioning something we recommend you reading the word and um, praying and letting god give you insight on what that means for you if you like our bible studies be sure to come back next monday we do bible studies every monday and we also do videos on Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesdays are faith-based videos. Right now we are in the book, What If God Wrote Your Bucket List by Jay Paleitner, and it's very interesting at times. <laughs> and on Fridays we do fun, lighthearted videos, usually makeup, fashion, food, yeah. just random things. DIYs, anything we're interested in for the week. So if you guys are interested in watching videos like that, then you can like and subscribe. And if you want to be notified of when we upload, you can hit the little bell. We hope you guys have a good day, have a good week, and don't forget to shine. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.